Hi, hi guys. Um, I was supposed to do a live, but the Wi-Fi here is flipping off, uh, basically in the studio. Right, on the table here, this is really for people who are literally just starting out in resin. I've been doing resin uh, for quite a few years. I mean, I do still go back to oil painting and acrylics, but I think my favourite has to be resin. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of pitfalls using resin and um, people get really excited when they start off and they're not taking safety precautions and this is a big bugbear of mine okay you can um build up um a resistance to it and you will become allergic to it so you need to protect yourself from the off of starting to use it okay and as all the companies now are saying oh you know it's safe and blah 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 don't believe them where uh, a chemical respirator from the point of mixing because some of the resins the bubbles are actually airborne during the mixing period now I can't wear the glass when I, which I should do because I wear glasses and I get an echo of a kerfuffle when my glasses coming off and one thing or another because the chemicals can be absorbed into your skin and you, into your eyes everything and you can get nasty allergic reactions so better to safeguard yourself. So can you wear long sleeves, long trousers, um, keep your feet covered, keep your hair tied back for God's sake, because if you don't, you'll be like me, shaving bits of your hair off and you forget. And you rub your fingers through your hair. Anyway, so tie your hair back, wear something over your hair, head, like um, a baseball cap, anything really. I suppose with guys with beards, cover your beard, because the hair does fall out. And you've spent all this damn money on the resin and hey presto you've got flipping hair stuck in it from you so don't do it so right starting off respirator long sleeves long trousers hair tied back hair covered and gloves now you should have like the purpley color nitric gloves which i've run out of so if i was gonna do one today i'd chuck a pair of marigolds on and then clean them with wet wipes and or alcohol afterwards so right, so this is what you need. So you need a substrate. Substrate is something you're going to paint on, okay? It can be, uh, these are on, what are they on? Birch board. These are big paintings. This is birch board. Um, they, it doesn't warp. So MDF can warp. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my boy. So he's learned from all my mistakes. So when he does it, he's pretty spot on. But I don't touch frozen. But you don't touch frozen. <laughs> Not yet. So yeah, you can use, I love using slate. You you start off small, use little, like, little heart. Make sure uh, whatever you're starting with, you got a spirit level and it has to be perfectly straight. Like that isn't. So my resin will literally trip, trip, trip. So I'll leave, oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. And then it will literally all cascade off. And I'll be left with basically a non-painting. So even that much, well, not that much, but even, I decided to go straight now. <laughs> even that much out, fraction out, your bubble's not in the middle, your resin's going to go, bye. And that's all your money gone there. So yeah, to do that, if you were using something like slate, Vaseline, big, Vaseline hates resin, well, resin hates Vaseline. So you could paint on your backside, on the edge, there, Vaseline, don't get on your front because the resin will just go, no, I don't think so. So, or you can tape your back, or really with slate you can just chip it off to be honest um you can use really small little bowls and do sort of trinket bowls to put jewelry on or you can freestand it it's freestanding art much easier way to start off doing your resin right do small big pieces are statement pieces and you really don't want to be making all those mistakes that you're going to make on a big piece because it's costing you a lot of money so please just start off small. These little petries, easy to do. 
You can even get wooden things like this, start off. So just, you know, just small, just too small. Cost you a lot less money. So, right, so you've got your substrate ready, your hair's tied back, you're all covered up. And you want to start with your resin. Okay, so I've used most of the resins available in the UK. I think I've pretty much used all of them. Like recently now, I, well, this week actually, I've got this one here. So this is available um, www.metalcast something uk. Anyway, I got 10% off voucher as well, so. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the consistency. After I put in warm water for about 10 minutes, it acts like art resin, but there's very little bubbling and no odor with it, which is great. And the finish was pretty cool. It was like little, like glass. I haven't got them in here, actually. All right, anyway, so yeah, I'm quite impressed with that. As I say, I've used all of them. They've all got different qualities. Like, you know, if you're doing coasters to sell, you need a heat proof resin. Okay. But anyway, let's not go into the complicated thing. Let's go into the basic. All right. You need a timer, tickety tock, because your resin will need measuring for usually two, sometimes three minutes, depending on what resin you're using. So you need your timer. You also need your timer because resin has a work time. So whatever your work time is, you really need a timer to know your time is nearly up and get finished. Otherwise, you could have a gloopy mess and, well, you just want to have a nice resin painting. So <coughs> you've got those on. You could, some people like to dam the sides, you know, with different types of tape. This isn't the tape I would use usually. So, but anyway, you know, to stop it dripping off. Not that I ever lose any resin off my paintings, obviously. Lie, lie, lie. Okay, so they would dam it like that and then take it off about an hour after, depending again on your resin. So you need something clean <laughs> to mix your resin in. This is not clean. So <laughs> you need something clean to mix it with. This again is not clean because I haven't cleaned them. So, Never do. <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah, I do. <laughs> so this is a two-part resin, um, one-to-one -one resin. So you'd have, say, 100 mils of this, 100 mils of that. Then you'd pour it after you warm. I would recommend warming it for 10 minutes in cold, in warm, in cold water, in warm water. Okay, and then you, your uh, resin will be on the bottom. Your hardener, you will see clear damp. damp um, Demarcation, is that the right word? Between the heart and the resin. So you have to mix it together and you have to mix from the bottom and you have to do the sides. And a lot of people like to do a figure eight motion to prevent getting extra bubbles. I didn't have that problem with this resin, I have to say. But some resins, you will get a lot of bubbles. So, <clears throat> After you've mixed your resin, you then pour your resin into some cups. Now I put a tiny bit in first, and then I add, these are, these are pigments. Okay, now you can get lots of different things. You could even use, uh, I, I, what do you call it? Eyeshadows, broken down. Uh, so these are, these are actually pigments. They're universal pigments, they're called. I'm not sure that they're available anymore, actually. Micas, these are called micas, very fine powders. Lovely, lovely, lovely resin. These, um, the high flow acrylics, again, great in resin, but before you use, always shake because they, it separates, the colours separate. So if you can shake them before use, uh, less than 10% on anything. I tend to use about 5% pigment. So pigment can be anything from paint, high flows, micas, anything, but a very small amount of your resin. So your small amount, say I'll do it for example, I haven't got resin here mixed up, and I'm not mixing it up today. So you'd use maybe say, 
less than that really pop it in your cup then however much resin you would like and I've just used two spoons which is very clever of me anyway small amount of resin first mix that up before adding however much you want okay so mix that in first and then you won't get bits um, that are not mixed together because that looks well sometimes if you're doing seascapes it looks all right actually but if you're not doing seascapes then sometimes it's not okay so then you you know you do your painting then and la da da and you enjoy yourself and your painting is done so you can either use bad boys or you can just use creme brulee to if you want you know to torch it to get bubbles out etc etc so you know you haven't got to get one of these you can just use these are freely available not freely available they cost money so but yeah you know worth getting a small one if you're scared of using the big one which most people sensible people would be I'm not uh, you need a hairdryer that's it like, like this lovely little hairdryer you need a hairdryer but don't do like me all right I forget and I've got resin all over mine you can put cling film I used to do cling film when I was well behaved now I don't know what's happened to me so I wrap it around there so then your hairdryer will last you because if you get resin in your switches they never work again I've gone through loads of um, the gas things and heat guns by getting resin on them but you can use the same thing put it that thing from around your we'll just save you some money just run the bit that doesn't go <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, don't run the part that gets hot don't do that <laughs> so right so that so then you manipulate your painting as you want whether you use your fingers and then you'll see some flipping bits in it that you hate so get like a little skewer and you can literally pick out if your hair goes in there which it tends to you can pull it out okay you can just pull it out and just wipe it a bit you need this light in here is no good for resin in today right this it's not going to cut it you know you really need good lighting and good ventilation a window opening although you need the room warm before you even start doing resin you don't do it in the cold area you do need your window open while you're doing your pour okay because you know to allow the fumes out and also some resins stink absolutely stinks for heaven um but you know i'm a bit sensitive to it <laughs> ish kind of right so i hope that makes a bit of sense so when you've you finish then and you've got your painting oh it's beautiful and you've lost a bit of resin you've got a bit of resin left in your cups do not waste them okay get some molds of some description where they're bottle tops yeah yeah bottle tops you can use make fridge uh, magnets out of you can make jewelry with literally a few drips left over scoop scoop up your bits because this will be perfectly clean and they won't have bits on like mine and then you can just scoop them in there and you can have you know really pretty pieces of jewelry not that i would wear any of these but you know <laughs> people do <laughs> it's just not me i like that one steampunk okay so yeah so you need something to put your drips on after i mean um because you don't want to be wasting expensive stuff okay then when you really don't scrape the, the bits out from the bottom of your cup though, because you'll find that that may not be mixed properly okay so just spoon what can, comes out really um yeah so i think i've covered most of it try and keep it covered get a box after you finish your painting so make sure your box will fit whatever substrate you're using I wouldn't recommend starting off using a canvas canvases can sink in the middle and also even if you pad them out they can bow afterwards so keep it simple right don't over complicate your life and enjoy it and enjoy the process 
Um, yeah, cover it with a box, most of touch dry, 12 hours. So you could really put your second layer on, some six hours, some 12 hours. All the resins are different. Um, yeah, go away and leave it alone and then go back and see your masterpiece. I hope um, I've explained it in a way that you can understand and it's not too mind-boggling really. But you see all these pretty girls, right? They're all out there doing their resin work. Nobody explains this stuff. And I think as a, I wish somebody had explained it all to me when I started a couple of years ago. And um, I just saved myself a lot of money, really. So I hope it helps you guys, really. Okie-dokie. See you again.